Welcome, people of St. Bridget's, and whoever you may be viewing this online, um, welcome to the celebration of the 18th Sunday of Ordinary Time. There are many out there who are hungry for real food. We ourselves are hungry for the Eucharist and for the community, the unity that will be when we can gather together as one. This altar is hosted by Christ, who feeds us with his hand. The hand of Christ feeds us, God feeds us, and answers all of our needs. So as we gather, we celebrate in the abundance that we have, even in these times of pandemic and isolations. We are given more than we need. Our opening song, Bread to Share. plenty to share and joy for all who sorrow you have plenty to share and faith for unbelievers you have plenty to share there you have plenty of fish to share plenty of fish at the feast of life plenty of fish to share plenty of fish at the In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. We gather today to contemplate the goodness of God. We realize that the answer to all of our prayers is God's own presence, God's very being, God's very self, uh, in relationship to us, in relationship to the human family. And, and living in our own hearts, this aliveness, this, this quickened by the Holy Spirit that we are, is always going to be an answer that is abundant uh, to all of our desires. Gathering to contemplate God's goodness, we seek the gift particularly of an understanding heart. Lord Jesus, you are a feast for those who hunger. Lord, have mercy. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. Christ Jesus, you are water to all who thirst. Christ, have mercy. Christ, Christ have, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the bread that gives life to the world. Lord, have mercy. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. Almighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest. Glory to God in the highest. And on earth. God in the highest, 
Let us pray. Draw near to your servants, O Lord, and answer their prayers with unceasing kindness, that, for those who glory in you as their creator and guide, you may restore what you have created and keep safe what you have restored. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, all you who are thirsty, come to the water. You who have no money, come, receive grain and eat. Come, without paying and without cost, drink wine and milk. Why spend your money for what is not bread, your wages for what fails to satisfy. Heed me, and you shall eat well. You shall delight in rich fare. Come to me heedfully. Listen, that you may have life. I will renew with you the everlasting covenant the benefits assured to David. The word of the Lord. Thanks. Thanks be to God. Justice and might. The hand of God feeds us. 
Gaze with hope on the Lord, who feeds us with food all our days. To woman and man, God extends open hands as all living things fill with praise. The hand of God feeds us. God. Our justice and peace in you truth and goodness reside indeed you are near to all those who revere you and call out with hearts open wide the hand of God feeds us God A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, what will separate us from the love of Christ? Will anguish or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or the sword? No, in all these things we conquer overwhelmingly through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life nor angels, nor principalities, nor present things, nor future things, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus, our Lord. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. When Jesus heard of the death of John the Baptist, he withdrew in a boat to a deserted place by himself. The crowds heard of this and followed him on foot from their towns. When he disembarked and saw the vast crowd, his heart was moved with pity for them, and he cured their sick. When it was evening, the disciples approached him and said, This is a deserted place, and it is already late. Dismiss the crowds so that they can go to the villages and buy food for themselves. Jesus said to them, There is no need for them to go away. Give them some food yourselves. But they said to him, Five loaves and two fish are all we have here. Then he said, Bring them here to me. And he ordered the crowds to sit down on the grass. Taking the five loaves and the two fish and looking up to heaven, he said the blessing, broke the loaves, and gave them to the disciples, who in turn gave them to the crowds. They all ate and were satisfied. 
and they picked up the fragments left over, 12 wicker baskets full. Those who ate were about 5,000 men, not counting women and children. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord Jesus Christ. One of the anxieties we face during this um, health crisis is wondering if we'll run out of stuff. And so we uh, have a run on certain items, the now infamous and getting rather silly to talk about uh, paper um, uh, uh, story about uh, running out of toilet paper and then running out of um, paper towels. Now that all seems to be in abundance now that the market has determined where, where the need is. Then I noticed that there was a little bit of anxiety about uh, hand sanitizer. You know, would there be enough of that and the shelves were empty? Now there seems to be hand sanitizer, so we don't have to be too anxious about that. I can't seem to find much hand soap, <laughs> so that's my new little anxious thing. Forget about disinfectant. That has to be ordered from Pluto or someplace. Um, I have friends that work in industry that can't find it. We have a secret source for here in the parish uh, to make sure that uh, things are kept clean uh, here in the facility. <clears throat> but um, this is uh, indicative of how anxiety works. It makes us um, try to take things in our own hands, try to stock up on this or stock up on that. And, Certainly that, that can be um, necessary at times, but, but the degree to which it, it, it motivates us uh, becomes symptomatic of a type of, of anxiety that we have in our lives that is indicative of, of too much needing to control, too much not trusting, too much not sensing that we are a community. Uh, I think that um, when I'm faced with a limitation of certain things in the grocery store, I've, I'm learning to just let that go. It'll resolve itself, I'll find some alternative. But mostly these are just, these are just signs, these are just surfacey things of something deeper that they can point to. And how am I more deeply not, not relying on God as we're invited to in the gospel today and as we've been singing about? What, what is it inside of me that is still lacking faith? Faith is trust in God. Faith is surrender to God, that God will ease my anxiety. In fact, God's ultimately the only one who can ease my anxiety. Most anxiousness comes actually psychologically from separation from God. The fear of separation from God, uh, the fear of doing something that will separate us from God, the, the fear of not thinking we're in right relationship with God, uh, actually, this is where um, spirituality and psychology meet, and psychologists are starting to recognize this more, that our anxiety comes from what kind of relationship are we in with God? And by that, I mean, am I trying to play God? Am I trying to control everything? Am I trying to get uh, the most hand sanitizer of anyone? Am I thinking that I save myself? I can figure it all out that in fact I, I am a self apart from God. I can be a self apart from God. This can create tremendous anxiety and the good news, what salvation is, is that no, you can't be a self apart from God and that's good news. So throw your life into the loving care and hands of God who is our ultimate rescue and relief in Christ Jesus by the power of the Holy Spirit. That I don't have to keep on uh, figuring everything out about how to be a self, protect myself, exert myself, throw myself out into the marketplace, protect myself, defend myself. <laughs> See how this is about ego and defense mechanisms and with so many that we build up in life, how on earth can God get through to us? <laughs> how can we hear any tender message of, of hope and, and rescue and relief? So faith is always a leap Faith is throwing ourselves into the hands of God who is ultimately mystery. 
in repetition, I've done that in my life, and I reach a point where, do I have to take that leap again? And it seems like the memory of the times I've done it isn't sufficient even sometimes to take that leap again. And yet sometimes it is sufficient, and that's why we come here every Sunday, to remember the times that we've taken the leap of faith, the times that we've trusted, not knowing where things are going to go, not knowing how I'm going to be protected, not knowing the future. Who can know the future? Uh, so this, this is what faith is all about. And we need this type of trust in God, uh, and not a trust that, that means that, oh, God is going to just, you know, take care of everything in some magical way. We don't mean that. But what we always mean is that however human history plays itself out, God is in the midst of us, is, in the, is, is, in with, is with us intimately and entirely uh, to provide that uh, comfort, to provide that inspiration, to guide our hearts and our minds to find solutions, to assure us that God knows us better than we know ourselves, and so we don't have to live in this constant anxiety uh, about, about uh, that's really an existential anxiety, philosophers would say. And whether we realize we're in anxiety or not doesn't matter. We can think we're perfectly happy and go, be going about our business, be part of society like everyone else. But there's this gnawing thing in most of us, if we're honest. You know, what, who am I really? And, and what is my relationship with God? And who is God really? And so we keep on exploring that all through our lives with brothers and sisters in Christ um, and finding our relief, our the alleviation of the anxiety through that leap of faith that then forgives, that brings healing. Notice Jesus healed the people that were attracted to them. That's what God always does. When we give our lives over to God, we find healing. We find our peace that the world isn't going to give and I can't make up in my mind or create for myself. It's interesting in this uh, gospel passage that it starts with talking about the murder of John the Baptist. That was a type of feast that Herod had where there was plenty and it resulted in murder and alienation from God. That was the sign that, that Herod could provide for himself, that the king can spread a lavish table, take care of everything, is in control. And uh, we're reminded about that right before Jesus kind of so, not so subtly and subtly says, no, the feast of Herod is not the feast of God. The feast of God is when we, uh, when we uh, have the type of faith, which is surrender and trust, uh, even when we have nothing, and maybe especially when we have nothing, that the relationship with God, the intimacy with Christ and uh, the followers of Jesus will be the consolation ultimately, will, be, will ease our anxiety, and will steer and direct us towards how we might truly be fed how we will truly be nourished, in other words. When we talk about bread and wine and feeding, there are many examples of that in Scripture, and there are images that talk about God giving us God's very self, God being present to us in our need. And uh, that presence to us is the most satisfying, the most fulfilling, and that presence is utterly available and, and uh, graciously and lavishly available. How could it not be? God wants everything for us, but everything about himself especially, uh, that we might rely upon God uh, to find some peace in our hearts and to find some joy today and to, to come to the realization that there, there is hope. Dependent just on our own devices, that's when we have the anxiety of hopelessness because we know how much we've fouled things up. But if we can be inspired by the love of God, by the God who is love, and learn to be together once again as a community, seeking solutions and answers, supporting and caring for one another in ways that um, a crisis might bring out in us that we hadn't realized was the way to be human in the first place. Uh, this, this crisis, too, can be find healing and peace, uh, even as uh, people continue to be affected by the disease and to be infected uh, we cannot lose the hope that God is with us, uh, that God is providing the nourishment that we need by 
being present by giving us God's very self. And, uh, and in that realization, we know that as many of the saints have always expressed, all shall be well. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again. Dead. He ascended into heaven. Church. The communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. The hand of the Lord feeds us. God answers all our needs. With confidence, then, let us place our concerns and those of our community before the Lord. For the church, that we may share the bread of life, with all who hunger for meaning and purpose in their lives, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For the grace to trust, that we may recognize that nothing can separate us from the love of God, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are hungry, for those facing famine, for those struggling with drought, and for all undernourished children, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who thirst, especially those compelled to cross the desert in search of work and opportunity in our country, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who labor in the fields to bring food to our tables, that God will bless, strengthen, and protect them, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are sick, especially those suffering from COVID-19, and for those who care for them, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died, that they may feast forever in God's kingdom, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. Bountiful God, giver of all that is good, let us feel your presence in our lives and help us be your presence to others. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. One of the things that has relieve the anxiety and help us have joy and hope during this troubled times as the many of you who have contributed financially to St. Bridget's. Thank you for your support and if you haven't done so yet, please join in either by online giving or automatic payments from your bank or bringing your contributions here. It helps so much and helps us keep going, especially now that we're starting up our live services again this weekend. Thank you again for your support.
Pray, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Graciously sanctify these gifts, O Lord, we pray, and accepting the offering of this spiritual sacrifice, make of us an eternal offering to you through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for you so loved the world that in your mercy you sent us the Redeemer to live like us in all things but sin, so that you might love in us what you loved in your Son, by whose obedience we have been restored to those gifts of yours that by sinning we had lost in disobedience. And so, Lord, with all the angels, we too give you thanks as in exaltation we acclaim. indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and we drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Hear us, hear our prayer. Humbly we pray the partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Hear us, hear our prayer. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, Thomas and Eduardo, our bishops, the clergy, and all who minister in your name. Hear us, hear our prayer. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your faith. Hear us, hear our prayer. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Saint Joseph, her spouse, the blessed apostles, Saint Bridget, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, 
all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen, amen, amen. Amen, amen, amen. At the Savior's command and form by divine teaching and encounter, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the, for the kingdom, kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with, with your spirit. spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, Lamb of God you, take away you take away the sins of the, sins of the world. Miserere nobis, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Miserere nobis, Agnus Dei, you take away the sins of the world. Dona nobis pacem, Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am not worthy, worthy that, that you should enter into my room. You only say, say the word, word and my soul, soul shall be healed. God has given us bread from heaven. God has given us bread from heaven god has given us bread from heaven sing with joy we have more than we need our fathers told us stories that we now tell to our young we teach our children wisdom we once learned on mother's knee. In turn, they tell their children, so the circle never ends. This is bread, this is bread from heaven. God has given us bread from heaven. Two jobs to feed her family. A hospice worker helps a man who cannot feed himself. A family gives their weekends up to serve food to the poor. This is bread, 
Justice now works hard to change the law. The people of St. Bridget, when engaged in ministry, this is bread, oh, we are bread from heaven. God has given us. Let us pray. Accompany with constant protection, O Lord, those you renew with these heavenly gifts, and in your never failing care for them, make them worthy of eternal redemption through Christ our Lord. Amen. As Mark mentioned, um, we are starting Mass at 4.30 and 9.15 again this weekend. And so hopefully everyone will, uh, that comes uh, are people that are healthy and are in the category that's uh, safe to come and that we continue to practice everything that is healthy uh, when we pray together in that fashion. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go and announce the gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. With this bread we will walk with each other, with this cup we will follow the Lord. Compassion, love overflowing, God's love ever knowing, we share it in our song. To offer assistance when others are blind to the need. To give loving care to each other is planting God's seed. 
Walking the promise and falling on mercy Believing we'll walk with you With this bread we will walk with each other With this cup we will follow the Lord Compassion, love overflowing God's love ever knowing We share it Washing the wounds of division we seek to ease pain. Sharing the burden of others like God's gentle rain. 